a little while ago, I was at work and I got chatting to another guy there who happens to be another Raspberry Pi enthusiast. And he was bemoaning the fact that once again, the Raspberry Pi Foundation have changed the way that you set a static IP address on a Raspberry Pi. So I got thinking about this and he's right, they have. So let me show you a few different ways that you can assign a static IP address to your Raspberry Pi. Hello once again, Pi Geeks and Techno Nerds all over the world. My name's Jeff, and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. I've been playing with Raspberry Pi since they first came out, and I wanted to share with you some of the projects that I've done over the years. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more, and also hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Also, in the comments, let me know how you get on with this project, and if you've got any ideas for other projects that you'd like to see me do in the future, put those in there as well. Now, let's get on with today's project. Okay, so I guess the first question is why would you want to set a static IP on your Pi? Well, let's say you're running some kind of service, a web server, a webcam, a NAS, anything like that, and you don't want the IP address to change because you want to be able to get to that device on your network and always use the same IP address for it. Now, if you use DHCP straight out of your router, it will merrily give you an IP address and that will normally be guaranteed to last for at least two hours. And most of the time, so long as your Pi is left switched on, it will keep on renewing to that same value. However, there is absolutely nothing guaranteeing this. And especially if you end up with new devices coming onto your network now and again, you could end up with the IP address being reallocated to something else. So the way around this is to allocate your Pi static IP address. And there are several ways that you can go about this. And there's also a few ways that you should avoid as well. So here I am on the desktop of a freshly installed Raspberry Pi. Now, probably the easiest way to set a static IP address is to go up to the network settings in the system tray, left click, go to advanced options, and then edit connections. That will bring up this box here. Now, in this case, I'm just going to play around with the wired connection. But if you want to set a static IP for a wireless connection, you can do it in the same way. You just simply select the name of the connection that you wish to change and then click the settings icon. From here, you go to the IPv4 settings and change the method from automatic DHCP to manual. You then click add to add an address and you type in the IP address that you wish to use. You also have to provide the net mask and the default gateway. And then finally, provide the IP address of the DNS servers that you wish to use. In my case, there's only one, and that's the IP address of my Pi-hole DNS server. Once that's all done, you just hit save. Now, what's a little strange with this is that it hasn't actually applied this change. If I open up a terminal window and then I look at the IP address for the ETH0 interface, you can see it's still got the IP address 192.168.0.30. Whereas in the settings, I just tried to change that to 0 0.31. Now, in order for this to take effect, you can either reboot or you can just shut down and restart that particular link. Now that's restarted, if I go to show the IP address again, you can see now that it's changed. And indeed, if I reboot, it should remain that way. If I show the IP address, you can see it's set at the static value that I wanted. And that's great. But what happens if you don't have the GUI? Let's go and take a look at that. Here, I've logged into the Wi-Fi connection on the Raspberry Pi so that I can play around with the wired connection without it kicking me off. Now, where everything got kind of confusing with static IPs in the past was that for several iterations of Raspberry Pi OS, 
The way that you configured a static IP address was by editing the file dhcpcd.conf that sat in the slash etc directory. Now we're using Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, the big problem is that that file no longer exists. Now there is a kind of equivalent file. If you go to slash etc slash dhcp slash dhclient.conf, then in here, there are some changes that you can make to configure an interface with a fixed IP. In this case here, I've set up the ETH0 interface to have this static IP address of 192.168.0.32. I've then provided the default gateway as the option routers and the subnet mask, and finally the DNS server. Now, if I save that, I can apply it with the command sudo dhclient minus r eth0. If I then look at the IP address, you can see that the IP has changed successfully to the dot 32 address. However, now look at what happens when I reboot. Now the system's rebooted, if I take another look at the IP address for the ETH0 interface, you can see now it's switched back to that dot .31 address that I set within the GUI earlier. That dot .32 address has just been entirely forgotten. However, if I go back to the dhclient.conf file, all of the changes that we made earlier are still present. So any changes that you make to this file won't survive a reboot. It's a really important thing to know. Instead, if you want to set a static IP address from the command line, there's a whole bunch of commands that you have to run to do it. Now I'll put all of these in the description below so you get easy access to them. But this is what you have to do. First off, it's important to understand that Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm makes use of a service called Network Manager. And in order to interact with it from the command line, you have to use a tool called NMCLI. Firstly, I'm going to use this to provide a list of all of our interfaces. Here, you can see that the first line it's returned is our ETH0 wired interface. Now I can run a command to set the IP address of that. I can then use a similar command to set the gateway. And finally, another command to set the DNS server. Now, just like in the GUI, I could reboot in order for that to take effect, or I can just bring the interface down and up again. I'll do the latter. And now if I look at the IP address, you can see that it's been set to the dot 32 address. And this time, if I reboot, that should persist. Now the Raspberry Pi is rebooted, let's just check the IP address again. And sure enough, that dot 32 address has now persisted. Now, if you want to return to DHCP from the command line, you do it like this. Now, if I bring the connection down and up again, now we can see that our original dot 30 IP address has come back again. However, we also are left with the dot 32 address. It hasn't got rid of that. And indeed, I've not found a way to do this successfully from the command line. And the only way I've found to delete the address is by going back into the GUI and the edit connections window going back into the settings for my connection and then selecting the address and deleting that row. And now if I reboot the box, finally, we're left with just the IP address from the DHCP server. Now there is meant to be a way that you can delete the static IP addresses that were defined. In theory, if you use a command like this, whereby you put a hyphen or a minus sign just before the parameter name, and then you specify all of your parameters like that, it should take all of that entry away, leaving you just with the fact that it wants to use DHCP. However, I've not found that that works at all. And the only way I could get it to work was through the GUI. It's absolute infuriating madness that Raspberry Pi OS has become this complicated in doing something as simple as setting a static IP address. 
So instead, let me show you how I do this for my network. Here, I'm logged into the router for my home network. And I've gone to the DHCP server settings. Now, your router may be slightly different to this, and you may find that these settings are in a different place. But if you just look up the DHCP server settings and address reservation, then you'll see what I'm looking for here. Now, under address reservation for my home network, I already have a number of IP addresses set. And what this will do is for any of these boxes at the point where they boot, they'll all be set for DHCP addresses. However, in this address reservation list, they will always be given the same IP address every time that they boot. So if I click on add here and then view connected devices, I can select our Raspberry Pi and I can now say that I want that to be given an IP address of something completely different. Let's give it 234 as its IP address and save that. Now I'm going to reboot my Pi again. And now the Pi is rebooted one more time. If we look at the IP address that it has, we can see that we have our .234 IP address as we configured it in the router. Now I personally prefer this method above any of the others because it means that I can maintain the IP addresses for all of my devices in one central place on my router. And I don't have to configure each of them independently in their own configuration files. So I just find this much, much simpler. So there you go, a few different ways of setting a static IP address on your Raspberry Pi that's running the Bookworm operating system. Now, like I said, I personally like to use my router to do this because it centralizes everything. But no matter what your reasoning is for wanting a static IP address, maybe it's because you're setting up a server, maybe it's just because you've got a lot of devices on your network and you want to arrange different IP address pools for different types of device. Maybe all of the phones go between .100 and .110. Maybe all of your servers go between .200 and .220. Whatever you want to do, your network is your own business. And I hope you found this useful as a means to simplify the allocation of IP addresses, but also so that you know some of the things to avoid and some of the things not to use. Certainly, some of the command line stuff just doesn't seem to work in the way that the documentation suggests it should. Maybe there's just bugs in the software. I really don't know. But the only thing I found out for sure is if you leave all of the IP address management to your router, everything seems to behave a whole lot better. But that's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on with allocating static IP addresses for your network. And if there's anything else that you'd like to see me do with a Raspberry Pi, let me know in the comments there as well. Thanks so much for watching till the end. And until next time, Bye for now.